everyone and welcome again. The case we're going to introduce now is the Behavioral Insights Team, or BIT. This is an interesting case to use social innovation when trying to understand and nudge individual behavior. According to their own description, the Behavioral Insights Team is a social purpose company. They are jointly owned by the UK government, Nesta, and their employees. The main goal of this team is to influence and change people's behavior in terms of decisions and actions based on the potential of behavioral economics. The concept of behavioral economics is nourished by two important fields. On one side, behavioral science. On the other side, social psychology. These two disciplines come together under the umbrella of behavioral economics to understand how we make decisions that, from a classical viewpoint, have a rational explanation. Behavioral economics overcomes this limitation by providing good explanations on how we do behave. Let's use now our five variables on social innovation in the case of the behavioral insights team. The first variable refers to social transformation and impact. In this regard, we should try to answer the following question. How effective is the initiative at achieving the desired social transformation and resolving the problem it wants to fix? The BIT has had a relevant impact in three spheres. The first one has to do with the cultural shift that has taken place across certain government departments which are engaging with the use of behavioral theories in their policy-making practice. Here we can see change. The second point has to do with cost savings, especially in tax, error and fraud. We can collect more evidence on this point too. Finally, the third sphere refers to the potential for change in lifestyle choices, contributing to both individual and social well-being. The data collected in the case shows that progress has been made in the area too. For instance, by increasing the punctuality on tax payment in a given district or neighborhood. The second variable refers to cross-sector collaboration. The question to answer now is, who are the key stakeholders in ensuring that the initiative is successful? And what are the mechanisms used to engage with them? The BIT was conceived as a unit to force partnerships with other sectors, concretely with other sectors within the UK government. In doing so, they followed an engagement process through the following steps, raising awareness, brokering partnerships, demonstrating potential for trials, communicating the results to engage organizations from both within government as well as businesses and civil society, and finally, embedding the approach into the policy-making process. The dialogical part of social innovation practices, so important in our field, has been met in the BIT case. The third variable is economic sustainability and long-term viability. The question to be answered here is, how is the initiative funded and what are the strategies adopted to ensure its survival in the future? Well, as it's plain to see, the initiative was funded in a climate of severe austerity and public spending cuts back in 2010. In this context, the two strategies adopted were generating cost savings on public expenditure and saving money for individuals. Both goals were successfully achieved to the point that the unit relied, financially speaking, and since its inception, on the savings it produced. The fourth variable takes us back to the type of innovation created. The questions that arise here are is the innovation close or open to be replicated by others? Is the idea developed from an earlier concept? What are its innovative traits? In the BIT, two characteristics stand out for its capacity to innovate. For the first time in Britain, we meet a unit that brings specifically behavioral science to the field of public management to improve its efficiency. Additionally, to provide evidence of its success, a new trial-based methodology was applied. It is thus innovative for both the recipient field and the methodology used to prove success. Music 
Our fifth variable refers to scalability and replicability. Remember here again the questions. What is the potential for the initiative to expand or multiply? What are the conditions required so that it can be replicated in a different situation or context? In the case of BIT, and according to what we have been seeing so far, there is a great potential for scaling up the team's approach. The method is simple. The tools are plain to use and the way it works within the British public sector makes the BIT a firm candidate to be replicated across countries as well as within the UK. As you have seen, the BIT accomplishes all the requirements for being a case of social innovation. This is all for now. See you in the next section.